you know, this is a culture I grew up around and in and fell in love with at a real early age, you know, and I never, you know, knew anything but that. This is all I, you know, this is all I loved, all I ever saw myself wanting to do mm. in life, you know, so it's not like, you know, I'm just doing me, mm -hmm. you know, and that's all, that's all I can do. That's all I know how to do. You know, it is what it is. If there's any area of the entire world where white people are both outnumbered and overmatched, it's the world of hip hop. Rendered the outsiders in a culture that was created for and by the black community, it's one historic art form in which they've never been able to truly co-opt in the vein of others. After all, rock and roll was invented by black people, but the average person may think of that genre and immediately envision a gallery of long-haired white dudes. But when it comes to rap music, the genre's star power and the capacity to shift the culture generally remains in the hands of those who first pioneered the sound and brought it to the masses. Now the biggest form of music in the entire world, the sound that was devised in the inner cities now fascinates those in the suburbs like never before. And with the notable exception of Eminem, its superstars are hardly white. Sure, there's vets like LP, ASAP Rock, and Atmosphere, or occasionally you'll get an MC that has a fleeting moment in the sun like Macklemore or Asher Roth, but bearing the late great Mac Miller, the past decade or so has seen little to no white artists being clutched to hip hop's heart in the way that M or regional legend like Paul Wall was. So much so that in the case of Machine Gun Kelly, it took a transition to another genre for him to become the superstar that he'd always foreseen himself as. But if any Caucasian MC has been a staple in hip hop recently, at least in commercial terms, it's been Gerald Earl Gillum, better known as G-Eazy. Or at least that was the case until his successor arrived with bigger hits, and more importantly, a greater appreciation from the culture that was missing from his run in Jack Harlow. After initially entering the industry as a producer during his days at New Orleans Loyola University, the Bay Area MC commenced his career as an MC in 2008 with the self-released Fresh EP and the Tipping Point mixtape that followed. Following on from the successful Vans Warp Tour, which was generally an outlet for pop punk and rock acts, by September 2012, G-Eazy's impressive run of success as an independent and self-governed artist resulted in the majors predictably knocking at his door. Entitled These Things Happen, his first record under RCA peaked at number 3 on the Billboard charts and came complete with collabs from Bay Area icon E-40 as well as then rising star ASAP Ferg. But from the very moment that success set in and he appeared to be making inroads to hip-hop culture at large, it was clear that he hadn't passed the muster in the eyes of some. And in 2015, he was grilled about where he fit into the fast evolving discussion around cultural appropriation. And for the most part, G Easy seemed eager to brush it off. This is who I am, this is what I grew up with, this is what I do. Is and, it even um, fair to make you a representative for stuff like that? Like when those things come up, do you do you feel nah, like man. it's fair I mean, for the pressure to be on you? Or do you do you take the challenge? Like how do you, you handle know, it? You just it is what it is. Life is life. You know what I mean? Like you don't you can't run from it or duck from it or anything or try to make it sound like it's unfair. I'm lucky to be here, you know what I mean? Like I fell in love with something at an early age and I worked hard for it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just like, I'm not supposed to be here. It's like I put the work in to rise to the challenge and occasion. You only have what you've experienced to talk about in your perspective, your life. But where he seemed happy to chalk it up to an unavoidable part of the package on that occasion, there are other times in which he seemed aggravated by the idea that he had to defend his position. I pay them no mind, he informed Guardian back in 2014. At the end of the day, I fell in love with making music at an early age. I've been doing this for 10 years and it comes from a genuine place. I didn't grow up around all white people. I never wanted to gentrify hip hop. I've never wanted to speak to an all white audience. I'm just making music and I'm paying my bills. With articles such as popular white MCs are on blast for cultural appropriation, how g Easy get a free pass? g Easy pushed on undeterred and by 2017, he hit what was his undeniable commercial peak. Given free reign over the charts courtesy of singles like No Limit with Cardi B and ASAP Rocky, 2017's The Beautiful and Damned stands as the moment in which g Easy felt most embedded in the hip-hop landscape, landing him at number one on the genre's chart as well as the third spot on the Billboard 200. The platinum-selling record may have received the middling critical response that was just par for the course at that point in his career, but it didn't change the fact that in those days, Gerald seemed like he was here to stay. But then, things started to go astray for the MC from the town. With his These Things Happen 2 album running into a whole host of delays, from 2018 onwards, his 2020 side project, Everything Strange Here, landed at 144th on the charts. And by the time that these things happened, two arrived on September 24th, 2021, its 19,000 units shifted in the first week it wasn't just a far cry from the days when he was moving 122,000 in that same time scale, but marked his lowest selling studio project ever. With hip hop's indifference towards and finally being adopted by the masses, G Eazy has found himself outcast from his position as a leading white rapper. And while being demeaned by Machine Gun Kelly along the way certainly didn't help, the real problem is twofold. One, he never found a way to prove himself to the culture and always felt like a commercial mock up of what was happening within hip hop. And two, he made the biggest mistake you can make in hip hop. 
He took his foot off the gas while he was hot. Now left with only a fraction of the audience that he once possessed, it's clear that there's a new top prospect in town, and that is undeniably Jack Harlow. Birthright. MCing since his days in high school, Jack caught the attention of one DJ Drama and was eventually signed to his Generation Now imprint. After signing with Drama in Don Cannon's label in 2018, Jack got on his grind and gradually built a name for himself. But since January 2020 and the arrival of What's Poppin', Jack has suddenly been carrying himself like a superstar. And more importantly, hip hop fans of all races are responding positively and have taken him on as the next white rapper who's got a real shot at a lengthy and profitable career. With G-Eazy seemingly holding no animosity towards Jack, the pair collaborated on Moana, and in an interview with MTV, Gerald heaped praise on Jack's talents, and despite the fact that he was the more established artist, actively took Harlow's lead on that record. I, I found out about Jack's music. I've been a fan for a minute, and I reached out to him. He uh, he brought my homie on tour with him, All Black, from, from Oakland. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and I just reached out to show him love. Like, look, I appreciate you bringing my brother on tour. I love what you're doing. I'm a fan. When we connected, I was in Atlanta finished on my album. He pulled up to the studio and that was like a rough idea he had. And we did that one on the spot, it just came together. He's just like a down to earth, like humble, good person. You know, and I think that's something I always look for, you know, and appreciate and respect in, in, in people. Granted, g Easy should be given props for actively co-signing Jack from his more senior position in the game. But with that said, it seems to be no coincidence that as Jack's star ascended, g Easy's foothold began to crumble. While g Easy was going double porcelain with everything strange here in June of 2020, Jack's December debut album, That's What They All Say, debuted at number 5 on the charts. And since then, he's only gone from strength to strength. Along the way, he graduated from playing to tiny crowds at Lollapalooza to commanding the main stage as though he were made for it. But for Jack, this is no coincidence. And where Gerald seemed to anger by having to prove his credentials as a white man in the hip hop space, Jack used that annoyance as fuel and realized that he had to prove himself if he were to have any degree of staying power. Because a lot of people like kind of just look at a white rapper and they assume that he's sort of attempting to get in on something else. You coming from like a younger generation and like a different way of thinking about that it probably didn't feel that out of the ordinary for you? It just was something I was passionate about, but even now, like, I have enough perspective to realize why people are kind of still put off by it a little bit. It's not unheard of anymore, but people still will alienate you. Mm -hmm. I still walk into rooms and feel like, yeah, I'm white in here. It gives you a little chip on your shoulder, I ain't gonna mm. lie. Even gives you a small complex. It used to affect the way I used to make music. Right. I wanted to be that kid that could prove he could rap. Uh -huh. Now it's kind of moving into a space where I just want to make good music. Right. And show show people that I'm a whole dynamic person. I don't feel like I had to be this one type of artist. But early on, it was like, oh, this is how they treat you when you're white? I guess I got to do this to show them that I'm, I can really do this. Do you feel like you get love for the most part? Yeah, the, the shock value that comes with it is beneficial in the end. Mm. So there's privilege to it. And then there's, of course, like you feel like there's walls up. But then you look at Post Malone and it's like... Come on. Once seen as an outsider, Harlow has already been lauded by his idols in a roundabout fashion. When a video of Jack spitting as a kid went viral on Twitter, Kendrick Lamar came out of a social media hiatus to react to it, before Drake labeled the same video as hard later that evening. Even though Jack jokingly asked if this is what it takes for the great ones to recognize my work on his Insta story, it's safe to say that it doesn't feel like the last time they'll cross paths if he stays on the same trajectory. From proclaiming that he felt blessed to have a voice in hip hop, to actively aiming to lead by example for white kids in black spaces, and striving to weed out any fans that feel otherwise in the process with his activism during the BLM protests in June of 2020, Jack has made himself easy to root for in ways that white rappers seldom are. And when you couple that with his humorous, down-to-earth persona and his close ties to leading hip-hop adjacent comedian Drewski, he's found himself a recipe for success that doesn't even solely come down to his own material. As while some fans might not be bumping, that's what they all say, you'll find few hip-hop devotees who take issue with Jack's place in the game or feel that he's not genuine. When there's ringing endorsements coming from both those at the upper reaches of the game and its lower ranks, it's hard to dispute his place. Case in point, stories such as how he stuck his neck out for fellow Kentucky MC ESTG, even when law enforcement tried to deter him, has done nothing but cause hip hop to band around him. And then they had told me like that the LMPD had called down to Atlanta, like to a generation now, that's who he signed to, right. to, you know what I'm saying, to Jack's manager and drumming them and told him like, y'all need to keep Jack away from G, like, He's a danger to people around him, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, wow. It'd be a lot of violence around him, like, and that really could have made Jack be like, ah, oh, hell, I ain't with him. He was always supportive of my music, like, once he got wind to it. On his album, he had me and Lil Baby, I think. You know, he had four other songs that was bigger that he could have chose to do. Mm. He see it in me, like, he's one of them people, like, 
are you recording g you gotta make sure you record and like mm. man don't go home he was like man it don't got nothing with with you being a gangster it's all about music for him like he mm. think i he think i'm the best rapper ever like you know what i'm saying like you can't tell him like he'll put me up against anybody like song for song like he believed in it more than i did at the beginning when you're a white rapper, you can take the Mac Miller route in which hip-hop embraces you or the path of many of those who've come and gone. And if all signs aren't misleading, he's arguably venturing closer to the territory of the former. Now, with a number one single to his name in the shape of Industry Baby with Lil Nas X, Jack has become the leading white rapper in the game not named Marshall Mathers. While for g Easy, it seems that through a mix of complacency and never truly capturing the hearts of the hip-hop world, his glory days are now behind him.